Hi, my name is Pam East, and today I'm going to be talking about enameling in the ultralight kiln. These little ultralight kilns are a great alternative to a full-size kiln. They're very cost-effective. They're uh, manufactured by JEC Products and sold through their certified retailers. Uh, you can find a list of their certified retailers on their website. And they make two models. This is the original Beehive model. It's a little bit smaller. It's a little bit less expensive. Um, that's what the element looks like. And it's a nice little unit. I've had one like this for, oh my gosh, over a decade. John over at JEC and I were trying to figure it out. I couldn't even remember how long I've had it. But it works awesome. Um, this is the newer studio model. And it's a little bigger. It has a larger element. And it has more material in the body of the, of the unit, in the ceramic fiber body. And for enameling, that's going to become very important. It's going to hold and radiate heat a little bit better. I really like this unit for enameling. You can enamel in the smaller unit. Um, if this is what you already have at home, no problem, you can use it. But if you're looking at buying one, I highly recommend the Studio model. Uh, one more thing I want to talk about before we get started, and that is this video is on enameling in the ultralight. It's about the ultralight and how to use it for enameling. It is not a project video, so I'm not going to be going into a lot of detail about enamels and applying enamels and, and how you use enamels. I'll be demonstrating as part of the video, but that's not what this is about. So if you want a step-by-step -step project video on enameling, please see one of my other videos on craftcast.com or on YouTube. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Before we get started, let's talk about the tools and equipment that we're going to use for enameling. Obviously, we have our studio kiln. Uh, this is the, the ultralight studio model, and we're going to have the heat safe surface to put it on. This is a uh, heat mat that JEC products developed, and you can put this right on your countertop. It'll protect your countertop so that nothing gets burned. I'm going to set that on there. You're also going to want a tile or some heat safe surface for setting down hot things. If you set down your lid, if you set down your trivets, they need to go on a heat safe surface. So I always have a tile for that. Um, you're also going to need a way to put the items in and out of the kiln. And that is a combination of a trivet and a spatula. Um, this little spatula comes with, um, comes with the ultralight. It's included. Um, and it works really great with my adjustable trivets. Um, I developed this line of trivets and they are available at metalclaysupply.com. This is the small trivet and this is the tandem trivet, four point trivet. And the, the, I like the tandem for when I'm doing earrings. I can do both earrings at once. It's good for long, thin shapes. And the way this works is you just pick it up with the spatula and you're able to use that to place it in the hot um, ultralight. The other thing that you're going to need is a way to protect the element. If enamel, if your piece gets dumped over or enamel drops off and gets onto the element, it will ruin it. So we do want to put protection on the element, but we're not going to use a metal clay firing disc. That would insulate the heat too much. It does put some stress on the element if it's on there too long. And enamel firings tend to be much longer than metal clay firings. So instead, what we're going to be using is a mica disc. So this is a mica disc. It was designed to go in the ultralight and it just pops right in there and sits on the element. And that way, if any enamel spills off, it's gonna land on the mica and not your element and you'll be fine. And these are easy to replace. Uh, the other thing, I, I am going to use this, uh, this metal clay firing disc, but I'm not putting it inside the machine. I'm going to be putting it waffle side down on top of the lid. And the reason that I'm going to do that is it, it won't make it heat faster. It won't make it get hotter. What it's going to do is it's going to improve the recovery time when we start enameling. 
When we put pieces in, we have to lift the lid off and put it back on. And it takes time for, it cools off when you take the lid off. And it takes time for it to get back up to temperature and start fusing your enamel. If you have a hot disc on top of your kiln, it will recover faster. And I'll talk more about that later. Um, so we have this, we have our, our unit all ready to go. I've got my spatula, I've got my trivets, I've got my pieces to enamel. Now what I want to do is preheat the unit. I'm going to, it's plugged into this um, dial device. I can put in different temperatures based on which number I dial it to. For preheat, we are going to dial this puppy all the way up to 10. We're going to the top. And I've got that on there. I've got the disc on top so that it will warm while everything else warms. And it needs to preheat for an hour. Um, I know it seems like a long time, but you really need time for the muffle, the, the body of the unit, to soak in the heat and become very hot. Otherwise, it won't recover as fast when you're putting things in, the temperature will be too low, and you won't get a good fuse on your enamels. So we're going to come back in an hour when this is preheated, and we're going to start enameling things. Okay, the uh, ultralight has had an hour to heat, and I'm ready to start enameling. Um, in preparation for this video, I made several of these little silver pendants out of art clay silver, and I did fire them in the ultralight, and then I brushed and tumbled them and prepared them for enameling. I cleaned the metal for enameling. Um, and on this one, the one I'm going to be demonstrating, I also put on... Um, counter enamel. I put enamel on the back side and that helps the enamel keep from cracking and um, I thought you'd have more fun watching me apply enamel than applying counter enamel so I did that ahead of time and now I'm ready to start applying the enamel. This pink liquid that I'm putting on here is called clear enamel. It is a wetting agent and it allows me to uh, lay the enamel in more easily and it also is a bubble reducer. It will reduce bubbles in enamel and you will get a clearer result. And so I really like using the clear enamel when I'm applying enamels. And I'm just going to do kind of a little V pattern. I'll be starting with my darker color and working to my lighter color to give it some shading. It'll make it a little more visually interesting. And these are the enamels I'm choosing to use today are made by Ninamaya, which is a Japanese enamel company. They are a leaded enamel, but you could do this with Thompson's lead-free enamel. There's no reason you can't. Um, I get my enamels from Enamel Art Supply, a very nice company out in California. I really enjoy working with them. And uh, now I'm going to move to my, my second darkest color and I'm going to shade them together. And so I kind of overlap the colors a bit as I'm laying them in. Let me tip that up a little bit. I can pick up a little more at once. There we go. Uh, my brush is a Silver Brush Company makes this. It's called a Golden Natural. The size I'm using today is, oh, what size am I using today? A double zero. It, um, Golden Naturals are my, among my favorite enameling brushes. I like them as well as the Sables. And then I'm going to go to my next lightest color. And then I'll finish up with my lightest color. And then before I get much further, I'm going to um, kind of blend the grains together where two colors come together, especially between the darkest color 
and the next one up because I can kind of see a distinct line and I don't want a distinct line. I want a more natural blend. So I'm going to just mix those colors together where they come together so that I don't have any obvious lines. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tap it. And what tapping does is it settles the enamel down into the design and it brings the water to the surface and it makes for a smoother enamel. And the last thing here before I dry it is I'm going to wick away the excess moisture with my expensive wicking paper, aka toilet paper. Let's see. Sometimes you can see the water coming off of it. One last thing, I do want to clear off the silver, uh, the silver frame. I don't want enamel up on that silver frame. Um, if I get that on there, I will just have to clean it off later. So I will save myself some work by cleaning it off right now. All right, so I want to dry this before I put it in the ultralight because if there's a lot of excess wa water in the piece when I put it in the ultralight it will turn into steam and it will come off of the it'll blow the enamel off of the uh, piece so I'm just putting my trivet up on top on this drying on this um, ceramic disc up there that's a very warm place and it won't take but a minute or two for the enamel to be dry enough to fire so we'll come back then All right, so the enamel is dry. So let me take this off of here. Do not pick this up with your fingers at this point because the trivet is very hot at this point from just from sitting up there. Um, I'm going to be putting the piece in, but there is an opening. You'll notice that there's an opening on one side of this kiln and I need to be able to put it in from that side and that would be a very awkward angle if it was facing you. So I'm going to be turning this so that opening is facing me so that I can get the piece in and out. You'll still be able to see what I'm doing from the other angle. All right, so now I've got that ready. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in there. You want the lid to be off as little as possible um, because the longer it's off, the more it cools. Slide that back a little bit. And now I'm ready to start timing. I have my timer set for three minutes and I'm going to hit go and off it's running. Um, when I do my first piece, like when I do my counter enamel, I found that it takes longer than three minutes. And I think at, the unit continues to get hotter and hotter the longer it's on. And um, so when I come in, my, my timer went off, it had just been an hour. And it took me four, four and a half minutes to fire my counter enamel. Uh, this won't take as long because the unit has been on a lot longer now and it has gotten all warmed up. So we'll come back when the timer goes off and take it out. Okay, so it's been about three minutes and we're going to see if this is done. I've got just a couple more seconds on my timer. And there, there it goes. All right, and now I'm going to take it out. Well, first I'll check it. I'll look and see if it's fused. If it is, I'll take it out. If it's not, I'll put the lid back on. And it is fused. It looks fabulous. And I'm going to set that down, let it start cooling. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is that it's no longer those pretty blue colors, um, but it's going to go back to those pretty blue colors. You never know the true color when you first pull it out of the kiln. Um, you won't know the true color until it's completely cooled off. So as you're watching it cool, you can see it shifting from green to blue. Um, I'll probably do another coat of enamel on this and um, you'll get to see it when it's all done. So I hope you've enjoyed learning how to enamel in the ultralight kiln. As you can see, it's very easy and it's very fun and I'm hoping you're gonna have a good time with it. 
Check out my YouTube channel for videos on how to fire metal clay in the ultralight kiln and on a variety of other topics. And please subscribe to my channel. Come and join me next time, and until then, have a great day.